Hey boys and girls, how are you doing? All right, we're gonna be talking about how to monitor and clarify. I want you to grab your packet of anchor charts. It should look like this on the front. And we're gonna be looking at about the fourth page. You have that same monitor and clarify chart that Ms. Schwedler has. So pause if you need to go grab that. You also need to be grabbing this, your packet of work. Okay, so when we talk about monitor and clarifying, to monitor means to keep track. So just keep track of what you're reading so that you're making sure you're understanding as you're going along. Clarify means to check. So you're going to want to check for your understanding. So as you do that, do I ask yourself, do I understand what I just read? If the answer is no, there are going to be two different paths you can take, depending on if you don't understand a word or you don't understand a whole section. Un not understanding a word sometimes doesn't affect the meaning that much. You might can still get the overall meaning, but if there's a whole section that you're not understanding, you're going to really need to use these strategies. So if you don't understand a word, decode it again. Maybe you're just not pronouncing it correctly and therefore you can't understand what the word means. Look for context clues. Remember we talked about context clues. Context clues means the words around the word um, that may help you better understand. Think about the context of the kind of story you're reading in also. So think about words that relate to the topic that you're reading. Replace it with another word. Maybe you have a small idea of what it could be about, I mean, what, what the word could be, and so replace it with a word that you think is a synonym or a similar word and see if it still makes sense or see if it better makes sense. Look it up in a dictionary or glossary. If you truly just can't figure out what the word means, you need to look it up because if you don't know what the word means, it could take away from the meaning of the story. Look it up, ask someone um, so that you can carry on with the reading and understand it. If there's a whole section you don't understand, make notes about what confuses you. So make, write down those things that are confusing. Think about what you know. So think about what you already have read and understand. Think about what you know about the topic. Reread and look for details you may have missed. So go back to the last part that you understood and then read it again and think about what those things that you may not understand um, are. So go back and find those confusing parts and see if there's something that you missed. Okay, look at images and features. Everything on that page is going to help you better understand what you're reading. They're up there to help you better understand. So remember to look at the images or visuals and remember to look at the way that the text features, maybe there's things that are bolded or italicized that are going to help you better understand. Okay, now let's look at our packet. The first question says, what does aprende mucho mean in Spanish? And if you look on page 46, like it tells you to do, you will see where they say aprende mucho. Let me get to my page. I thought I had it open already. Yes, so it says, have a good day, hijo. Aprende mucho. Learn all you can. Okay, so they already give you a clue right there and, and let you know what aprende mucho means. They did that little dash and then they put the words in English. So they defined what aprende mucho means. So you're just going to write that English part right there behind it. How does Miguel feel about Roger? How do you know? So on page 47 and 48, think about, and they want you to find out more about the relationship between Miguel and Roger and find out how Miguel feels about him and tell me what how he feels, but also tell me why he feels that way. Don't leave out that why part. Okay, if you move on to page 49, you're going to see that um, they call Miguel Mike or why, and you need to find out why that's not a good thing to do. Why is calling Miguel Mike a terrible idea? That's on page 49. Okay, on page 1551, why are people surprised that Lili and Mexico speak Spanish? Okay, so read those, those two pages and figure out why people are surprised that they speak Spanish. What do Miguel, Lili, and Mexico have in common? And then, lastly, I want you to figure out what the words chow, bonjour, punjambo, Hola, namaste, and konnichiwa mean in English. Okay? All right, boys and girls, I'll talk to you later.